Let us take up question number 13, page number 251. A plant manufactures washing machines and dryers. The major manufacturing department are the stamping department, motor and transmission department and assembly department. The first two departments produce products for both products while assembly, depart assembly lines are different for the two products. The monthly departmental capacities are stamping department 1000 washers or 1000 dryers. Motor and transmission department 1600 washers or 7000 dryers. Washer assembly line 9000 washers only. And uh, last line in the table dryer assembly line 5000 dryers only. Profit per piece of washers and dryers or rupees 250 and 300 respectively formulate the LPP model that is linear programming problem model LP model so firstly understand that uh, the problem is focused on maximizing the profit how do we know that it is a problem on maximization they have mentioned in the problem very very clearly profit per piece of uh, the two products that they manufacture they are washers and dryers their unit cost, unit uh, profit being 250 and 300 respectively. So now let us just understand that we have three components in LP model when you formulate. The first one we call it out as objective function. What is that? Objective function. How do we update this objective function? We start with either maximize or minimize. In this case, by reading the problem, when we know that it is profit per piece, we can easily conclude that it is maximization problem. Maximize Z is equal to the unknown quantity of washers. Let us keep it as X1 and 270 is the profit per piece. So 270 X1 plus. What is the profit per unit for the second product that being dryers 300. 300 x1 x2 sorry now out of the three components that we have in LP model the first one is over what is the first one objective function we know what is the objective objective is profit maximization and that we have just completed then the last one the third one which would be the easiest of all the lots that being we bring out an assumption that the quantity can neither be zero nor it could be negative. So for mathematical limitation purposes we can say quantity can be zero but it can't be in the negative. But what would happen in mathematics when you ask a person as what is the square root of 25 he will tell plus or minus 5. But practically when we are taking up the matter for applying it in business model either you sell five units or you don't sell you don't say that I have sold negative five units therefore we bring out one of very important matter that being non negativity assumption so that we can put it out where x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero so but whatever we just do under examination conditions when we run short of uh, time the first thing is that the easiest one we should firstly take it up. First one objective function we have taken up. Number two non-negativity assumption that we have brought up. Now let us just take up the constraints. So at this moment when examiner invigilator is pulling out the paper at least two out of three we would have completed. So only on that objective only I have just taken up the last one as the second one. The second one now I am going to take up that being the constraints. So now let us just have a close focus on the matter that they have reported. There are two departments through which these two products that uh, they are bringing out. In fact, I would just say there are four that you have. One is stamping department, the other one is motor and transmission department, washer assembly line, lastly dryer assembly line. So there are four constraints that we have. Let us just uh, have uh, a discussion this way. What they mentioned in this problem is that stamping department either they can produce 1000 washers or 1000 dryers. That means they are not given us what is the total time. But within the time whatever they have, within the time whatever they have, they can produce 1000 units of washers or 1000 units of dryers. What is it we should understand? Both washer and dryer will take same amount of time. 
within a given span of time if you could produce equal quantity of two products quite naturally we should understand that the time taken per unit of washer and the dryer will be same it is for sure uh, it is like that only then the second department where they mentioned motor and transmission 1600 washers and the other one being 7000 dryers that means if the entire time is used only for washer they can produce only 1600 if the entire time is used only for dryers they can produce 7000 dryers that means the time taken to complete one washer will be greater than the time taken for one unit of dryer whereas in the earlier uh, case of stamping department for a given time whatever may be the time let it be 100 hours or 1000 hours we are not really worried about what is the total time that they have but what we can tell is that both washer and dryer will take same amount of time for a given point of time in that department given point or given amount of time in that department both the products will be generated with equal number of units so therefore both will have same time taken per unit that is what we have got to understand <coughs> now how do we transmit this data into constraint and uh, let us also take up the third and the fourth washer assembly line so 9000 washers only you can produce that means I can't produce greater than 9000 units in the case of dryer assembly I cannot produce more than 5000 units so therefore out of four constraints that we have the last two can easily be knocked off what are those last two so easier ones I am just taking it up firstly so let us just uh, provide the space now so constraint number one and constraint number two we are not updating right now we will take it up a little later so we can say that the number of units of x1 that we do not know that being washer washer can be less than or equal to 9000 9000 units only I can manufacture maximum the fourth constraint similarly x2 can be less than or equal to 5000 now objective function over non negativity assumption over and uh, two out of four constraints got over now we will focus more on to the first constraint same is the way we will apply it in the second case also now I would like all of you to just closely follow what I am just telling so when you have <coughs> total time that we do not know let the total time being stamp department total time of stamp department let us just bring out an equation total time is equal to number of units of uh, washer let it be x1 into time taken per unit which we do not know then x2 what is x2 number of units of dryer into time taken per unit of dryer so now I am just writing it in short time taken per unit of washer ok all of you closely follow so mathematically what I would do is that on the left hand side the total time I will divide that by total time total time by total time that will become 1 on the right hand side x1 will be the same time taken per unit of w divided by total time plus x2 plus let me repeat time taken by time taken let it be 1 then we will just use the same denominator on the right hand side for those two components x1 plus time taken per unit of w divided by time taken plus x2 into time taken per unit of dryer divided by total time now please understand this portion is given in the problem itself that means total time when I use only for one unit of producing washer they have said as 1000 same is the case for dryer so how do we make it simpler total time divided by total time is 1 x1 plus 
for this particular unit when it is 1000 total time divided by time taken per unit of washer when it is 1000 it is exactly the opposite is what we are using so it is 1 divided by 1000 when this understanding we bring out then the next item that we have got to take up is x2 into 1 divided by 1000 so when this explanation can be offered for constraint number 1 you can extend the same thing for constraint number 2 now let us just go back and fix it up so it is x1 divided by 1000 plus x2 divided by 1000 less than or equal to 1 same is the way x1 divided by what is the number that they have provided 1600 plus x2 divided by 7000 less than or equal to 1 therefore the problem is solved so whenever you have no information regarding total time please just don't get worried don't be don't worry at all take that as one other items the numbers whatever they are given instead of putting it in the numerator please put it in the denominator and you can easily solve it okay thank you now let us take up on to problem number 15 page number 251 on formulation this problem was asked in May 1998 examination. Let us just take up this problem. A firm manufactures two items. It purchases castings which are then machined, bored and polished. Castings for items A and B cost rupees 3 and 4 respectively and are sold at rupees 6 and 7 each respectively. Running cost of Three machines are 20, 14 and 17.5 per hour respectively. What product makes maximizes the profit? Capacities of the machines are part A and part B machine capacity, bore capacity, polish capacity. They have just given. This is similar to that of problem number 13. They have not given what is the maximum number of hours but they have just given for one hour if they concentrate only on product or part A they can produce 25 same is the way in machine, machine department if they concentrate only on part B they can do 40 so now let us just basically understand what exactly the company is doing so it is a company which manufactures in this form what is that form so have a close look at what they just uh, say. They purchase casting. See, casting is a sort of an, a foundry item. A casting, uh, what I would just say, um, see, in a automobile manufacturing unit, you always have an ancillary unit, that being casting. So an item, a base item, they would just get and they are of two types one is A the other one is B but they can't use that into their finished product or they can't sell it as a finished product just this casting what they are doing is that they will they will machine it machine it in the sense they will cut from the casting the one that is required then for example I will just take up that particular uh, drawing so if this is the casting they will carve out this portion this will remain as not required at all but they require the casting the casting will come only in this shape so machine where they will cut out just like uh, a jeweler or any jobber will do this way even for that matter uh, uh, when we just go for uh, giving our clothing for tailoring we just find uh, uh, full uh, cloth is given and uh, you just find the person is just bringing out cutting so likewise he will carve out the portion that is required from the casting then what is the next job that he would do the next job is that he will pierce 
hole or he will create cavity so that the screw can be made or something like that. So that is what you consider as boring. Then the item that is cut out and uh, having uh, taken up the boring into that particular structure then the finishing may be a little odd. So if you put your hand so it, you will just find that uh, the sharpness will uh, pierce or it will create damage into our uh, rough surface. What is that they will do? They will bring out polishing. So therefore the entire process comes this way. They will buy casting, they will machine out and they will bore it and finally before it is sold they will polish it. So therefore there are four items of cost that you have to take into consideration. What are the four costs that we have got to take up? The buying cost of the casting, then machining which has got a cost, boring has got a cost and polishing has got a cost. So these four items you have to capture compare the total cost with selling price so as to find out profit. So the first thing is that the challenge before us is to find out what is the profit per unit. In this problem they have given you what is the ultimate selling price. Selling price for part A is 6 and selling price for B is 7. You can't just simply buy and sell this casting where the buying cost of that being 3 and the other case being 4. Apart from buying the casting and lot of expenses that they are incurring in the form of uh, machining, boring and polishing. So now we are going to capture that. Now let us just use Excel and uh, let us just show the computation there. Shall we try that? Let's see. <coughs> so now let us just take up product A and product B. You know the selling price of these two. What is the selling price that you have? Selling price is 6 and selling price is 7. Now let us just take up the casting bought out. Casting bought out is 3 and 4. This being the direct cost. Then machining cost, how do we capture for 1 hour for machine it will cost 20 rupees. Check up. Yes. So, running cost of these three machines, 20. So, 20 rupees per hour. In one hour, they can produce 25. For one hour, the cost is 20. You produce 25 units. What is the cost per unit? Cost per unit is 20 divided by 25. Am I right? It is costing you 20. You produce 25 units. What is the cost per unit? 80 visa. Same is the way, same machine you are using, but in this case now you are uh, putting it out for doing part B. For part B, what is the output? 40 units you can do. 20 rupees per hour. What is the cost per unit? It is exactly half, no? 50 paisa. Then, after machining, then boring. What is the cost for boring, Rajkumar? What is? Come on. 14 rupees. 14 rupees per hour. With that 14 rupees, Suman, what is the number of units produced in the case of part A? 28. 14 divided by 28. Once again, it is 50 visa. Same 14 rupees divided by, Krishna Priya, could you tell us what is the Number of units that they produce? 35. Correct. Let us take up polishing. Same is the case. What is the cost per hour? 17 rupees and 50 visa. Divided by number of units. Rajkumar, what is the number of units? Divided by 35. Let us understand that it is 17 rupees and 50 paisa that should be divided by the number of units that they produce in the case of product B is 25. So, how much you end up with 70 paisa. Now, you can understand that the cost is this much. So, as how 4 rupees and 80 paisa we have arrived at. Same is the way for part B, we are arriving at as 5 rupees and 60 pisa. Now let us just know what is the profit per unit. 
profit per unit is 6 rupees minus 4 rupees and 80 visa. The same formula is applied in the case of B. It is 1 rupee and 40 visa. So now you can easily crack this problem. In the last problem, problem number 13, what we have solved, the profit per unit was readily available, but in this case, we are forced to work out. Maximize Z is equal to, there are two products only that you have, product A and product B. So their profit per unit, just now we have got as 1 rupee and 20 pisa and 1 rupee and 40 pisa. Now let us just take up that <coughs> 1.20 x1 plus 1.40 x2 subject to as we have done in the case of problem number 13 what is that we should do as far as the first item is concerned machining department is concerned it is x1 divided by 25 plus x2 divided by 40 less than or equal to 1 the same logic what we have just taken up for question number 3 we are applying it and that is for machining department x1 divided by 28 plus x2 divided by 35 less than or equal to 1 for polishing x1 divided by 35 plus x2 divided by 25 less than or equal to 1 in fact if you read the question we have just asked us to find out the total number of units that we have got to produce. Where is that we have stated? What product mix maximizes the profit? That means we have to solve the problem. So, at this moment, uh, I don't want to go to the basics of solving the problem from the beginning to the end, which we have done adequately in adequate numbers. I mean, there are a lot of problems that we have worked out from the basics, starting from the initial table to the final table. So, at this moment, we are not putting our uh, knowledge for a test on to the basics. I mean solving the LPP problem. So through this problem we are focusing only on the formulation. If formulation is given then the rest of the problem can be solved through our experience. Now this item of uh, formulation by itself will be incomplete. X1 and X2 less than or equal to 0. Now if you look into the matter like in mathematics people used to write this way or the mathematics teacher may not be very happy. So if you write sign divided by cos. So, instead of writing sin divided by cos, you can as well write this as tan theta. See, instead of writing sin theta divided by cos theta, what we are expected to do is tan theta we are expected to write. Same is the way, at this stage also, I would say that uh, it is an incomplete exercise only. Now, how the first constraint that we can change? So, x1 divided by 25 plus x2 divided by 40 less than or equal to x1 divided by 25 we can modif modify this way x1 divided by 25 plus x2 divided by 40 less than or equal to 1 so what is the LCM for this let me repeat my hundred is not that great x1 divided by 25 plus x2 divided by 40 Less than or equal to 1. What is the LCM for 25 and 40? Suman, could you tell me what is the LCM for 25 and 40? All of you. 200. So, how many 25s you have in 200? Hmm? 8. Got 8x1 plus how many 40s you have in 200? 5. Am I right? Good. So now let us change the position. First constraint, you can write it as 8x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 200. First constraint over. Isn't it? Rajkumar, what do you say? Are you following? Next one. x1 divided by 28 plus x2 divided by take your calculator see next question I will be asking so please be careful for 28 and 35 for 28 and 35 what is the LCM you are asking me to use calculator is it 175 divided by 28 no 
इट्स नॉट करेक्ट कमॉन हाउ अबाउट वन फोर्टी वन फोर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी एट फाइव करेक्ट एंड देन थर्टी फाइव से नाउ वी कैन टेक इट अप सो इट्स अ गेस्ट वर्क ऑनली हाउ मेनी प्रॉब्लम यू डन समटाइम्स विदाउट कैलकुलेटर समटाइम्स अवर वर्क may be faster correct you have to take from the back and switch it on okay so now let us just take up so how many 28 you have uh, in 140 suman could you tell having taken up the calculator i want some work for the calculator so ha huh? how many 28 you have in 140 five times Without calculator, I am just working. Next, how many thirty-five you have in one forty? Four x one. Now let us just put it five x one plus four x two less than equal to one forty. Second, considering over third, third one. What is the LCM for twenty-five and thirty-five? Already we have made one attempt. What is the LCM for 35 and 25? 175. Yeah. How many 35s you have in 175? Five. I know that. Five x one plus. How many 25s you have in 175? Seven. Sometimes that is what I am telling you. Using calculator will take more time. So now let us just take up. 5x1 plus 7x2 less than or equal to 175. So those three constraints got over. Now let us consolidate our final answer. All of you closely followed is a very important problem. I am just solving only formulation. You have got to solve the problem completely. Formulation only. We are concentrating on this particular section. So whatever problems that we have taken up from problem number. 13 onwards in fact if you look into the title of the problem we have just titled this as formulation so you please solve it completely so what is that we have to take up maximize z is equal to what is that 1.20 x1 plus 1.40 x2 subject to so in fact i would say it is better that you don't decimalize You retain them in the form of fraction. So, how you can write this? Maximize z is equal to 1.2. You can write as 6 by 5 x1. Then 1.4. You can take it up as 7 by 5. 6 by 5 x1 plus 7 by 5 x2. Subject to what is that? We have taken up for first constraint. For first constraint, we have taken up as 8 x1 plus 5 x2. 8x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to what is the number that we have seen less than or equal to 200. First constraint over. Second constraint. 5x1 5x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 140. The last constraint. 5x1. Plus seven x two, less than or equal to one seventy five, where x one and x two are greater than or equal to zero. So this might come for your May fourteen examination. Today it is twenty eighth of February. We are just taking up this formulation. I wish you all the very best for you for your May fourteen examination.